Hey, well, I'll tell you, this has been a challenge today. I am still in that place of sunlight and shadows, but if I stand in the light, I can't see anything and neither can you. And if I stand in the shadows, hopefully this is a good place in between. But the Lord sent me back on. I'm actually almost at service. This has been quite a challenge today. I'm not sure what this is about. I've got to pray more about it. But I feel like my heart is being challenged uh, to get this word out today. It's come in fragments. I appreciate your patience. But uh, the Lord actually is giving a word here, and that's why I came back on. I'm uh, actually walking down a road called River View. And the Lord had given me that name uh, quite a few years ago, River, uh, for a reason I'm not going to go into. But the sign jumped out at me this morning, and even though I've walked down here before, and he said, I want to show you something, a new view of something. So as I began coming along, the Lord began to bring back Holy Spirit, I just let you take this and run with it. He's bringing back even now uh, a vision of Noah and Ham. And this is a heart matter, and it goes with the word that came before. All the words this morning. <laughs> Sorry, they've come in fragments. Uh, maybe the Lord purposed it to be this way. Uh, maybe there are parts of it that you need and parts you don't. Or maybe he's just giving it to us in little connection pieces. Anyway, the Lord began to bring back the story about Noah and Ham because the Word of God says that Noah was righteous before the Lord. And he was, but it wasn't his own righteousness. None of us can stand before God and say that our hearts are perfect, that we are perfectly righteous on our own before the Lord because we're not. And uh, that never will be. Uh, if it was, Jesus wouldn't have had to come. Even if there was one man like Noah who had been perfect before the Lord, Jesus never would have had to come because then the standard would have said to us that we can stand before the Lord in our own righteousness and that we are able to do that. We wouldn't need Jesus. But the fact is that God is a God who covers. And Jesus, when he came, he made the great exchange. He gave us a little bug flying in front of the phone. He gave us a his perfect, sinless, spotless life. And he traded it. He gave us his life and traded ours for his. In other words, all we can bring forth is uh, a righteousness that the Word of God says is like filthy rags. And he said, none of us are righteous, no, not one. And that our hearts are sick even the whole head. And so the Lord traded us his sinless, spotless life for ours that was full of sin and shame and broken and suffering and fragmented. And the Word of God says that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It's that great exchange, his life for our life. And I'm thankful for that because I know I could never stand before God on my own without Jesus covering me with his blood, his life, his love. And God does come to cover us. And so he was showing me the story this morning about Noah and about how when Ham walked into his tent, Noah had a vineyard. And I don't know the thoughts and intentions of Noah's heart. I don't know why he did what he did. Maybe he didn't even realize he would be drunk. <laughs> but he did get drunk and he was laying exposed in his tent in his nakedness. And Ham did the wrong thing. He came into the tent, he saw Noah as he was, and instead of honoring Noah, instead of doing the right thing, he left him uncovered, exposed, and he went out and told his brothers, Shem and Japheth. And they knew the right thing to do. They went, walked backwards, grabbed a blanket, walked backwards and covered their father's nakedness. They showed him honor in the covering. And God is about covering us always when we are willing to be vulnerable and uncover our hearts with him before him. You know, the Lord again is bringing this back. He's only about exposing his people when we refuse to look at our own sin, when we refuse to look at it and try to cover it up or try to cover 
ourselves before him. I know I'm not doing that anymore. As a matter of fact, I told the Lord myself that, you know, the enemy, he told me this, and I thought this was interesting. He said, you know, the enemy comes to bring accusations against God's people. He said, but you really should listen to what he has to say in this sense, that there are many times the enemy will come and he will accuse us of things that we don't want to lay bare before God and before others. I told the Lord last night when he was dealing with me, I said, you know what? If you want, I will make a video laying bare everything. And I really would, And if that's what the Lord asked. And of course the Lord said, that's not necessary because I cover you, I know your heart. And he knows me. He knows that, you know, I understand that, you know, it's kind of like the woman caught in adultery, Jesus is bringing this back now. You know, that we're so ready to judge each other, condemn each other, expose each other, and that's not having the right heart. We need to leave that to God. You know, the Lord said that he's the one that makes all things right in his time and all things beautiful in his time. And the Lord is the one that will uncover every sin in any person's life, no matter who they are, if they refuse to uncover it. Or if they are willing to expose the sin of others. God doesn't like that either. As a matter of fact, Jesus bent down in the sand and he began to write. And we don't know what he was writing, but I imagine sometimes that you know, when this woman was so vulnerable before the Lord and before them, and they were so willing to expose her and stone her. They didn't bring the man, you notice that. But, uh, you know, the Lord bent down and began to write, and I often wondered, wow, you know, did he just make them think that, hey, I can write your sins down here and expose you too? And he said, you know, he who is without sin, let him cast the first stone, and they all walked away. So, you know, the Word of God shows us that, you know, Shem and Japheth really did the right thing and what Ham did was wrong. And, you know, the Lord understands this too and he's bringing this back. Wow. It's, um, when he was going to send Jonah to preach to Nineveh because Nineveh had done some really, well, ugly things, much like our world now. And God really is sending people with words of love and also words of repentance to turn our nation back to him, to turn his people back to him. Um, but, you know, I don't know what was going on in Jonah's heart, but Jonah didn't want to go and preach the word that God gave him. He didn't want them to repent. He wanted to see the fire of God come down. And before God could send Jonah, who went in a different direction in disobedience to the Lord because he didn't want to do that, uh, the Lord had to deal with him in his heart first. You know, he had to uh, take him into the belly of a whale for three days and deal with his heart and what was going on in his. And, you know, uh, his heart was also exposed to when he was... Uh, in the heat of the day and the sun was really oppressing him and the Lord caused a plant to grow over him to cover him and to bring him a time of relief and refreshment and the Lord uh, made that plant die from a worm and Jonah got angry you see I believe what the Lord is saying here is again this you know we can't judge one another we can't expose one another we can't try to make things right, bring vengeance or get revenge to people that we feel have hurt us. Because we have to leave all judgment to God. God only knows the hearts of every one of his kids, of every person alive. And we don't know that. And we make so many mistakes when we judge each other because we don't see the whole picture. And the Lord is the only one that does see the whole picture. He's the only one that can correct the whole situation and all the people and make everything right and still cover hearts and if hearts need to be exposed he'll be the one that does it but you know this is just an amazing word as i'm standing here and it's flowing and coming because i'm seeing so many different things today i'm seeing hearts that the lord uh, is saying real firmly yet gently don't be prideful because you have things in your heart that i will expose to you and I'm willing to cover you. So don't be about exposing other people because I could expose your heart. And he doesn't want to do that. The Lord is all about loving us. And while he's about exposing things to us in our own lives that need to be dealt with. 
and showing us the reasons you know there can be reasons where we're just broken and things that have happened in our lives and we speak and say or don't when we need to because of our brokenness of maybe the sin in our lives and sometimes it isn't about the sin in our lives it's about the sin in others lives and what they have done that has caused a brokenness in us and has caused us to be the way we are you see people the Lord knows our hearts they're all so broken and yes they can be full of sin and full of pain and they can be like hearts of glass fragile and fragmented but I think what the Lord is saying here really in all of this is we're just better to leave our hearts in his hands and other people's hearts in his hands and let him be God because he's the only one that knows the story and that can make everything right wow good word anyway I am a few yards from uh, going to service and it's about ready to start I uh, again I apologize for all the fragmented videos this morning the technical difficulties and the light and the darkness but you know God has done it for a reason and while I don't fully understand it I just got to go with it so I hope you have a great afternoon